Hi Grade 11s and welcome to today's video on Uniform Accelerated Motion. So today we're going to talk a little bit about acceleration and how we can calculate velocity uh, given a uniformly accelerating object. So first, just a little bit of vocabulary. We're talking about uh, acceleration. We're talking about the change in velocity with respect to time. So the formula for acceleration goes as follows. So acceleration into a vector quantity, so it has the arrow on top, is a change in velocity over the change in time. So v2 minus v1 over t2 minus t1, where v2 represents what's called the final velocity, and you'll often see it abbreviated as vf. Uh, and v1 represents the initial velocity we're measuring from, which you'll often see abbreviated as vi. And of course, t is the time interval, which is measured in seconds. Hence why the units for acceleration are in, me oh, sorry, down here, meters per second squared. So meters per second per second. Um, now in uniform accelerated motion, the acceleration of the object, well, because it is uniform, we know that the acceleration is going to remain constant. So the object isn't moving up or down, or it's not changing its acceleration. In uniform accelerated motion, the object remains constant over time, whereas the velocity and the displacement will change over time. So with acceleration, obviously, a velocity is changing, and if the velocity is changing, so will the displacement over time. Now, um, because the object is uh, velocity is increasing, or in some cases decreasing, we'll talk about it later, and because it's uniform acceleration, the object's velocity increases at a constant rate. Much like displacement increases at a constant rate in uniform velocity, uh, velocity ex uh, ex increases at a constant rate in uniform acceleration. Thus we say the displacement is directly proportional to the square of time as well. So if we take a look here, we can say that velocity is proportional to time. So velocity is proportional to time because it is increasing at a constant rate. So v over t, we can say that the change in time is proportional to the change in velocity, whereas the change in displacement is proportional to the square of time. Hence, again, if you look at the formula, displacement in meters per second squared, so the square of time. Now, how can we find velocity given uniform acceleration? Now, because the change in displacement is exponential over time during acceleration, so if we're looking at an object that's accelerating, we're no longer going the same displacement over a given time interval, we're going in different displacements over different time intervals because the object's velocity is changing, so it's accelerating. Now we can't determine the instantaneous velocity from position time graph using any given slope from here because we have an exponential curve. However, you can draw a tangent line to any given time. So if you want to find the instantaneous velocity at that time, and you can find the slope of that line to determine the velocity. So what a tangent line means, and I've just got this down here, is if I wanted to find the instantaneous velocity of this object at two seconds, I would draw a line at two seconds such that the angle above and below the line is about the same. And if I wanted to find the instantaneous velocity of this object, all I would have to do is find the slope of this tangent line, and I could find the velocity of this object at two seconds. So let's take a look at an example of this. So in this example, we want to find the instantaneous velocity of this object at 20 seconds. So what they did, or what we would do, is you would draw a tangent line when the time is at 20 seconds. And we draw this line so that the two angles, either on top or below of the line, or either side of the tang tangent, are approximately equal. Now it's not always going to be the best, but we want to make sure that this angle here and this angle here are about approximately equal. Then to find the instantaneous velocity, we simply just find the slope at that time. So if we look at this, we know that the velocity at 20 seconds we could find given the change in position over the change in time. Now this one's been done for us very nicely. So if we take a look, we can see that the change in position, or the change in x, is 26 meters. 
So we can say the change in x is 26 meters. And then the change in time of this slope is 5 seconds. So if we wanted to find the velocity of this object, we could take 26 over 5, which gives us, if I just get on my calculator in a second here, it would give us 5.2 meters per second. So the instantaneous velocity at 20 seconds for this object that is uniformly accelerating is tw oh, sorry, 5.2 meters per second. What's so important we go uh, and this is, we can say, either going to the right or left, depending on which way this object is going, because velocity is a vector quantity. So the purpose of this, the real driving point I want to get away is a few different things. So if we have a velocity time graph, whether the object is going in constant motion, so v over t, so whether the velocity is uniform, or the velocity is changing, so it's accelerating, the area underneath a velocity time graph, so whether it's accelerating or not, will give us the displacement of an object. So if it's going at a constant velocity, we can just do v times t, so we can find the displacement at a given time interval. If we have an accelerating object, well to find the area of a triangle, it's base times height, with, so base would be v, uh, t, height would be v, so v times t, and for a triangle, it would be over 2. So for an accelerating object, we could do v times t over 2, and for an object in constant uniform motion, we can just do v times t. On a position time graph, if we have a constant uniform motion, in a position time graph, the slope of this line represents the object's velocity. Now, let's say we have a position time graph, as we mentioned before, that has a uni uh, sorry, an exponential curve. If we took a tangent at any instant, the so slope of a tangent in position time graph tells us the instantaneous velocity. So instantaneous velocity at that time. So the tangent, the slope of that tangent line tells us the instantaneous velocity at that time. And then the slope of a velocity time graph, so v over t, if the slope is rise over run and it's v over t, we can say that the acceleration is the slope of a velocity time graph. So the slope of a velocity time graph is acceleration. And we can look at an example like this with a velocity time graph. If the object is traveling at the same velocity, there is no acceleration, so the slope is zero, and we say that this object is traveling in uniform motion. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, please uh, do the practice questions, and we'll talk about this more next day. Thanks a lot.